Hey there, Dango Stu here. Today's video is on lanyard kill switches and is proudly sponsored by MarineEngine.com. Today's video is the first video that MarineEngine.com sponsored, so big thanks to those guys for getting on board and helping out with the channel. For those of you who don't know, MarineEngine.com sell all sorts of parts for our boards. So if you're doing repairs or maintenance sort of items, that's the sort of stuff they sock. So if you're looking to replace a kill switch like this, they're the perfect people to grab it from. What I'm going to do today is just show you what's inside these. They really are just a switch. There's nothing special about them. But I have been getting quite a few questions about them lately, so I thought it was a good time to go through how they work. This particular kill switch is from a Yamaha outboard, but they're identical in principle on across all outboard brands. The way these ignition systems work, more or less, is that you have a magnet up in the flywheel. So as you start the outboard by using the pull start or turning the starter motor, the flywheel starts to spin. As a magnet in the flywheel passes this pulsar coil, the magnet induces a current into that coil. So a small current flows through the coil and comes in here into the CDI. Because the flywheel's keyed onto the crankshaft, that happens at a very specific point in the cycle, so it knows which pistons on the compression stroke, which pistons on its you know, exhaust stroke, etc. And it uses that information to know which spark plugs to fire. Here I've drawn a pretty simple setup, which is a two-cylinder motor that shares a single coil. So it gets a signal from the CDI to fire. When it gets that signal, both spark plugs fire simultaneously. This particular system is called a waste spark system because only one of the pistons will actually be on a compression stroke when the sparks fire. So the one that's on the compression stroke will actually fire. It's got fuel and air and it'll fire. The other one won't be on that stroke. It'll just essentially be a waste of spark. So that's why they call this particular system a waste spark ignition system. The system works that way if the lanyard's in. And what happens when you put the lanyard in is you're taking a switch like this that currently has this white wire connected to the black wire and you're pulling the switch away from it. That's what this little lanyard does. It pulls that switch out and disconnects those two wires from each other. With them disconnected, all the current flows to the coil, the spark happens. If you pull the lanyard out, then this switch becomes on and what that does is send the current instead down this white wire through the switch and to ground. The spark stops and the engine cuts out. So that kind of answers, I guess, one of the most common questions is, how does this work? Does turning it on turn the motor off or does turning it off turn the motor off? And the answer is that turning this switch on turns the motor off. If you were to cut this wire, the motor would keep running. On Yamaha motors, this kill switch wire is a white wire and on your sort of Mercury's and Evan Roods, it's a black and yellow wire. That wire comes out of the CDI unit. These CDI units come in all different shapes and sizes. And in this case, these are two Yamaha ones. And so here's the white wire for one, here's the white wire for the other. So I know these are the two wires that go off to the kill switch. These switches can fail in a couple of different ways. One is that they're permanently closed, in which case you'll never get spark and you won't be able to start the motor. You'll be pull starting or turn the key and you'll just never get spark because it's always going to be sending that spark energy to ground. The other way is that this is never going to close, in which case you won't be able to switch the motor off. The motor will be running, you'll pull the lanyard out and the motor will keep running. I've got a kill switch over on the bench at the moment which is broken in the open position, i.e. the motor could never be turned off. So I'll show you that, then we'll pull one of these apart and see how they work. The switch on the outboard I was looking at when this problem sort of came up looks like this. It's one of the sort of rubber backed ones so you can press it. So I'll just cut this off and I'll show you. What you see inside is just two contacts and without the whole top part of this switch there's no way for those contacts to be connected and for this motor to be turned off. So this is an example of a switch that would just run on, pull the switch out, well, the whole thing's gone, you know. So without manually grounding it out, the motor would just run on forever. This is another older switch that's come off another outboard, but I'll open this one and show you what I'm presuming is actually a working mechanism. You can see here that this switch has a flat on the top part of the casing and on the bottom. So I'm just going to put a couple of spanners or a shifter and a spanner onto this and we'll open it up. The shifter I'm going to put on the large side and the other sides are 19 millimeter. So what you can see here you've got, and I'll take this apart further, is a little plunger section. So as you pull on here, this plunger retracts. 
there's a little rubber seal under here is a conductive disc and then here are your two connectors so while ever the switch is screwed together and the lanyard's out that little plunger is pushing that conductive disc onto the two terminals the switch is in the on position which means that the ignition's grounded and the motor won't run on the tip of the plunger there is a little circlip so i'm just going to go get that pick and pull that circlip off people also often ask about these little picks i find them really useful i use them a lot uh, I think they're sold as O-ring picks, so that's what I'd sort of search for if you're looking to buy one. This seems to be the most common type, which has a hook on one end, and then this sort of spiral section like that, that I must admit is actually quite good for, for sort of hooking an O-ring out. But I also really like uh, this straight one, straight like that with just a nine degree. I find that really sort of versatile as well. So in this case, I'm just going to use it to hook this little circlip out. I'm just getting in here and levering it away. Couldn't half predict that, could you? Now I'm gonna go find the bits. When you're doing this, I highly recommend that you don't do it sort of pointing it towards the camera. You're much more likely to lose bits. So what we've got is a washer that was on the end of that plunger and then the spring that was pushing it forward. If that spring has failed, the effect it'll have is that you'll put your lanyard in, motor will start just fine, but when you pull that lanyard out, the switch will stay out so the motor won't cut off. What you would have to do then is push the button in manually, which would then ground the ignition and the motor would go out. So if that's not happening automatically, it means that spring's failed. The plunger section out of its casing really is this plunger, the spring that goes on, the washer that goes on, and the little circlip that holds the washer on. In the other section, should this little conductive disc be so corroded that it's not going to conduct electricity, then you'll find that the kill switch won't function properly and you won't be able to switch the motor off. It's probably most common just to replace these switches. They do have individual components. If they're not available separately, you might be able to improvise. I mean, this is just a disc of metal. This is just a spring. Find something in the ballpark, chances are you'll be back in action. Other common things are just bad connections, that white wire or the black and yellow wire. If that's got a bad connection, then the motor you know, won't cut out. If the ground connection onto the engine block's not good, the motor won't cut out. Another situation which I'd had, I think I mentioned in a previous video with the uh, soggy Johnson tip thing, was that often these wires all come in one connector. And if that wire has water in it, then electricity will be able to flow from that white wire or the black and yellow to ground even though the switch is in the off position which is the engine being in the on position. When that happens you'll either get a no spark or a weak spark because most of the current's flowing through the water to ground so if ever that white or black and yellow wire has a path to ground then the motor's not going to get spark. So if you've got no spark that's a really good first place to look. Sometimes these switches are really easy to replace. In this case, where it's one like this, it's just a couple of short wires and some bullet connectors, nice and easy. Other times with some tiller switches, they actually get fed right through the tiller and it can be a little bit hassly. At the end of the day though, it still is only a two wire connection. So they're pretty straightforward to replace yourself. All right, we'll wrap this sort of video on kill switches up with a bit of a practical demonstration of how they work and don't work. Of course, the outboard I plan to use for this demonstration now isn't starting. It's been sitting in the workshop for ages and hasn't started for a while, so it's hardly a surprise. When I primed the bulb, it just started to overflow from the carburetor, so the needle and seat wasn't closing. I took the carburetor off, and you can see here the, the float's just completely stuck open, so it's no surprise it was free-flowing. So I'm going to take that apart, give it a clean, put it back together, see ya. So just taking the screw out now, uh, the float's pivoting nicely, but even here I feel I can't. It took quite a bit of force to pull the needle out of the seat, so obviously it's just a bit uh, gummed up in there. So that's the needle, that's what they look like. I'll give that a little clean. This little bit here is the seat that the needle goes in to shut the fuel off. So I'll put some carb cleaner, some compressed air, we'll clean it up. I'll blow the jet out while we're here and we'll try again. So I'm just going to blow it out. One thing you can see is if I put 
tub cleaner in here, you can see it comes out here and goes up my elbow. But that's the, the path the fuel takes. Comes in through here, from here, into the bowl, into the carburetor bowl. So now I've put a bit of carb cleaner in there. I'll let it soak for a little bit, a bit of compressed air, and then I'll just manually put the needle in and see how it goes. If it feels good, we'll put it back together. If it still feels like it's sticking, I'll do some more cleaning. The needle feels much more free in the seat now, so I'll put it back together and we'll see if we can prime it without it overflowing. I'll just clean out the bowl before I put it back on. Obviously it's this gunk and this evaporated two-stroke oil or two-stroke fuel that's left the oil behind that's gummed it up. If I pull the kill switch out on this now, it'll stop as normal. I've put the kill switch back in now and these are the two wires here coming from the kill switch. The white one to the CDI unit, the black one just going to the engine blockers ground. What I'm going to do now is just disconnect the white wire, start it up, then I'll pull the kill switch out. You'll see it won't stop because even though the kill switch is now active, the current's coming through this wire and it's never going through the switch to ground. The last thing I'll show you before I go inside out of the rain is I'll disconnect the kill switch again and I'll grab a piece of wire, we'll start it and show you how I can stop it by taking that white wire from the CDI unit and then just touch it to the engine block which is ground. Observe here a piece of wire, ordinary piece of wire, nothing inside it, nothing behind it. This is the white wire from the CDI. And that's essentially all the kill switch does, is take that wire, put it to ground. Well, thanks for watching. A uh, huge thanks to MarineEngine.com for choosing to sponsor the channel. It's certainly gonna help me make plenty more videos down the track, so that's much appreciated. I really hope you guys check out their website. They sell loads of parts for outboards, so all the jobs I've been doing videos on, if you're looking for the parts you need to complete the job, they're definitely the guys to go to. All right, well, take care. I won't tell you what I'm gonna do next week because every time I do, it's wrong. So we'll see. Still got the painting to do, still got the oven to finish. We'll get there. All right, see you guys, bye.